good morning. Welcome back, everybody, to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne, and Disembodied Hands, Justin, Quindy, John, whoever the heck else is out in the ether, but probably none of them actually because they're all packing Kickstarter boxes. How are you all? Happy Friday. Yes, obviously Pizza Dungeon. What else would Ed order? He likes his pizza to come with monsters. I'm going to get set up while we chat. It's kind of a morning. Kind of a morning. I slept poorly last night, so I'm like... Arr. Or at least I was before caffeine. Caffeine! Yay! The great equalizer. <laughs> and we've got Vansele. She's so pretty. Let me get her in focus. Focus! Focus on the orc. Half orc. Hey, everybody. Yeah, Monster Shapes Pepperonis. Yep. Indeedy. Yeah, it'll be a nice weekend. So, yeah, and actually, that's a good reminder. Thanks, Twisted Oma, since, um, since the Monday is a holiday. Uh, I will be not streaming on that day because David has it off. Um, so I will be, I will be being a, a 4th of July slacker on Monday. But I'll be back on Tuesday. Unlike David, who is totally a beyond 4th of July slacker, because apparently they get an extra day off to recover from their 4th of July. 4th of, uh, that is actually the 5th of July. I don't know. It's weird. Cheese that melts into goo. Yeah. They are, uh, they are okay. Like, I like the crystal. The glass is challenging because it's got different sides, so it's hard to make it look good. But thank you, Inara. Um, let me, we're gonna do, we're gonna do shinies today. We're doing shinies. Shinies. Shiny cape. So I think I was using, pretty sure I was using fire and sunrise on this one. So I think we were using, pretty sure we're using fire because I like fire for burny things. Obviously it's called fire red for a reason. You could also use fire orange, which I, which I also have. Um, or you could use sunrise. Both are equally good. As you can see, fire orange is just a little bit lighter. So you might use that for a highlight after you, you go up, uh, use it more like, like that. So, so yeah, so we're doing a uh, magical cloak on this lady. Um, when I saw it, it, it was just like plain before it was just blue. And, uh, since she's a wizard, I fi figured a cloak of protection was, uh, in the cards. So that's why we've got some, uh, kind of shield shapes up there and then, you know, different design patterns. Oh, I would like more coffee. Oh yes. Yes, indeedy. Uh, so yeah, so we're going in, we're making, essentially we're shading and highlighting and bringing in like different kind of like, um, little orange sparky highlights to, to suggest like embers and magical power and all that kind of thing. So let us put that down briefly and I am going to grab my blue, which is Ritterlick because lately I've been on a Ritterlick kick. Yeah. I desperately need more coffee. Desperately. I had an upset stomach last night and it kept me from getting to sleep until two. Ah. Uh. Oh, I'm too old for that. I know that's, you know, like, you know, the time some of you actually go to bed. But <laughs> for me, that's horrendous. I turned into a pumpkin at 1030. Hey, Poleth, it's good to see you. Yeah, you caught live RTB. What the heck? Yeah, I just... My, my gut went a little bit off and it just made me really uncomfortable and I couldn't get to sleep till two when it all kind of, you know, worked its way out. And, uh, yeah, then, then you, then you're just like the whole next day you're like, you know, like must double caffeine intake, <laughs> but it's Friday and this is cause for celebration. David and I have a nice dinner out tonight planned. So I have to go and catch a nap and definitely get a power nap this afternoon. Here you go. Here we, here you go, Smoth. You can see it better now. So she's got, as I was just explaining, Smoth, in case you missed it, um, I figured as a wizard, she would maybe have a cloak of protection and it gave us the opportunity to uh, do some design work and freehand on the back of the cape. It also gives us an opportunity to bring that red color up to the top more than in just the little bits of sleeves that you can see in the hair ties. So 
Yeah. So she's coming along really, really well. Um, she's really close to done, actually. We've got some medals, some silver medals to do on the front. Um, I'm probably going to bring in some green on that dagger handle just to repeat her skin tone just a little bit. Uh, and I've got a lot to highlight uh, still on the back here. Um, got to tackle some more highlights on the staff and things like that. So... Ribeye Friday at your house. Nice, Shadow Spawn. Nice. Like, I considered it, but we have a favorite restaurant, and uh, so we're, we're going out tonight. We like to make sure they stay in business. Ah, uh, every Friday. I used to do that. <laughs> Actually, I would do ribeye whenever the store looked, uh, the ribeyes at the store looked really good. I called it failing my save versus ribeye. I'm going to thin down this rooter like about two to one. Yeah, um, we made it. It's actually just plastic card. I decided that I wanted a blade. I th figured that uh, as, a, as a wizard, maybe a spear didn't make sense uh, or a combination crystal and spear. Uh, but as a half-orc wizard, having her staff be a pointy weapon also, as well as a uh, magical recept uh, reservoir, also did make sense. So... Uh, just part of the character, you should always ask yourself, like, who is this person I'm painting? And what would she have on the top of her staff? You know, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, we just used a thick piece of plastic card. Uh, I think it was the millimeter. Mill I think I think it was the millimeter thick. Maybe 1.5. So you can see how thick it is. Um, but it was fine and uh, certainly in scale for this model. So... And we just did the blade in plastic card, and I did some green work to make the little uh, setting to put it into. And my green work is pretty shoddy, but it, it works, so yeah. But yeah, we do have, of course, this one has uh, been on Pro Tips since the beginning, so if you want to see this model from the beginning, you can go and look on the YouTube. I think I'm going to actually add one more drop of, well, no, I think 2 to 1 Ritter Lick is probably good. I'm just using it for shading and defining the freehand at this point, so. Yeah, that's what I believe, Julie, is pointing things are always useful. Hey, I should get my Reaper Bones 5 uh, shipment tomorrow. I haven't checked on it today, but it was in California yesterday. I think I'm going to put my block on top of a block so that I can actually have it up here without holding it and you guys can see it. Let me get my block on top of a block, and then I've got to get it in focus. So I need to put some hands to get in the way, and then I need to focus. Yeah, that's much better. My block on top of a block is now in focus. Sweet. Now you guys can see her. Yeah, staff mod. Haha. <laughs> Smoth, this is, the stuff I do on stream is, is, uh, this is, I would say this model's a cut above, yeah. Um, it's not the same level as, like, some of my competition work, but it's, uh, usually it's pretty solid. Usually it's pretty solid. We sometimes do faster, um, we sometimes do, you know, more work on models. This is definitely one that has a bit more work on it. And then on my own stream, I do, uh, really high-end stuff. Ha 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 ha. Container as a god of anticipation. Disappointment. That's his downside. Like, if you if your gods have both a light side and a dark side, then it's anticipation or disappointment. Container is the god who brings both. <laughs> ah, okay. Wednesday delivery. Thank you, Smoth. Here is what I do on my own time, though. So we have uh, we have Kitty Cat, and and Noel, but Noel is not actually Noel is not sitting here. We were working on Noel yesterday. Yeah, Schrodinger's God. Yeah, exactly. Container. Hold on. Let's show you guys what we did yesterday. It's on my Instagram. Yesterday we were working on Doggy. She's cool. She can't keep her in focus at this level, but she's neat. So she just started. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Noel is awesome. I did more work on her last night, Bryce. I, I um, desaturated the side of her face that was in shadow. I started working more on the fur texture there. And did a bit more on the hair to figure out how I want to do the dreads. 
You know you like a model when you make a point to work on it more than once a day. <laughs> Knolls are awesome. I love Knolls. Isn't it, Julie? Like, like, you should check them out, Julie. White Werewolf Tavern. They have a Patreon, but you can find their stuff on Etsy. Like, people printing off their STLs. And they've got some really cool werewolves. They've got a really cool werewolf queen, and they've got that knoll. Her name is not Noel. But yeah, it's, she's... Uh, and they've got some cool dragons, too. Like, I think they're... Uh, they're right in your wheelhouse. <laughs> they're in my wheelhouse. And my wheelhouse is usually the Julie wheelhouse, so... <laughs> All right, so yeah, let's do the fire red. Yeah, the knoll is fun. Like, I can't wait to really get down. Like, we blocked in yesterday on my my personal stream, and if you go to um, twitch.tv slash paintingbig, you can look at my VOD from yesterday. I think it's up. Um, but we blocked in almost all. Like, I had the face started, but we blocked in almost all the other fur yesterday. Working really fast. That model right now has is faster than I painted a model, I think, ever. Um... Like, uh, definitely faster than I've painted any other high-end model. It's only three and a half hours, I think, so far. Thanks for the link, Quindy. I just really love gnolls. They've always been one of my favorite monster races. And I don't like how they've kind of rewritten them to be, like, just mindless. I don't like them in the new edition, so I use my old, old gnoll. Where they were their own kind of monstrous race and not just mindless servants of chaos. <laughs> yes, there's a plethora of and knowledge. Yeah, I was I was using a bigger brush yesterday. Hey, I ordered new brushes, guys. I ordered some bigger brushes because I realized that I didn't really have any because um, I haven't painted with the wet palette for a long time. So I uh, I got online and ordered some brushes. Ooh. Ooh, so I got some Isabes and another Escoda because I have this kind of not as good Escoda um, that I was using for fur yesterday. Uh, and I ordered uh, a Winsor Newton Series 7, I think, because there was like a lot of stuff. Uh, my beloved Raphaels were out of stock and uh, even I don't think even the Da Vinci's were in in the size I wanted. So, yeah, definitely Kalinsky Sable so shortage. Like, what is this? We like big brushes and we cannot lie, Quindy. Uh, Poleth, the, the knoll bust is, ah, is White Werewolf Tavern. And the Templar bust is by a company called Galapagos. Galapagos Miniatures. They do some fantastic stuff. Like, hide your wallet before you go to the, either of those websites or either of those. Hide your wallet. Raphael's are what I usually uh, do, or Da Vinci's. So Da Vinci Maestro. The keyword is Kalinsky. Small. That's the highest grade of Sable. It's like the Black Reaper. The Black Handled Reaper brushes are also Kalinsky's. And then the other brush that I love is Raphael. Again, Kalinsky. 8408, actually. And this is a size one, and this is my big one. Yeah, I have a size one. I use the size one Raphael 8408 a lot. My workhorse brush that I've used for 20 years that I use for, like, I still use all the time is my Da Vinci Maestro Series 10 size one. All right, let's thin down this red and orange and get into this. Yeah, I was very disappointed that I have I have free money. I have a Dick Blick gift cer gift certificate still um, that I'm slowly using up. So I was excited to to buy free brushes, um, but I was sad that they were out of stock on my Raphaels because I would have totally gotten an extra. Dick Blick gift cards, I tell you, almost as good as Reaper Miniatures gift cards. <laughs> no, you shouldn't have, Poleth. You shouldn't have. They're really, they have some really nice models. Galapagos does some good stuff. And and also, I gotta say that some of the highest quality casts I've ever seen, as far as, like, there's... I think I found a single mold line on that Templar. One. And it was easy to take care of. Alright, so we're using thicker paint here. About four to one for the reds and orange, because we want, uh... 
We want to be able to see it. Especially with the orange. Yeah, Miracle did. Um, David bought me one thing from them, and he had uh, he has another one from Miracle that uh, is lovely. So, oh, and I need my pure white, sorry, because we did our white in, uh, or our design in white, and then we brought the red over the top. And I need that white just in case I really want to bring that orange up. So, in case I need to underpaint or highlight further, I do want to mix up some of my pure white. Alrighty, we are now set. We have our uh, appropriate colors. I am going to thin that white down about two to one. Paint to water. There we go. Yeah, I like, I read David Eddings when I was younger. He was never my fave, but I read quite a bit. Old classic author from the early days, from the 80s, when fantasies just, you know, sold and sold and sold, and there were all sorts of new authors popping up. That's when I got into the genre. gonna put a little bit darker red in here gonna just glaze over this line um, wherever I'm in the shadow I want it to be red and wherever we get near a highlight we want it to go up to orange so My favorite author of all time, though, is... I don't know. Fantasy is probably Neil Gaiman. Even though technically he's urban fantasy for a lot of his stuff, but... My favorite sci-fi writer is C.J. Cherry. Right, so bringing up some orange there where we see you've got like kind of a fold that's sticking out and then we've got a little bit of a dip here and another like a uh, fold that's uh, con oof, concave here. So we want this to be in shadow for sure. So I'm going to bring in more of my Ritterlich blue and darken that down because it got a little bit, we've got a little bit of a highlight there because uh, it, this lower part is picking up light, but right next to the crescent moon here, I don't think it should be. So I'm going to darken it down just a little bit. Um, neither War Shadow. The orc skin is a half orc skin, I should say. She's a half orc. So I like to mix regular skin tones into my uh, half orc skin tones. One second while I just adjust this and then I will go and get my recipe. But yeah, it's a custom mix. So let me get her off of here. I wanted something that was greenish, but not like really, really green. So it is troll flesh and a rosy skin. So essentially take your troll flesh and start mixing rosy skin into it more and more as you get up higher. So it'll, so the highlights will essentially get closer and closer to a real human skin tone, although they will stop short since you've got the troll in there. And then the blush color is actually mixing deep red in there, which is something I commonly do. Deep red 9002 is a color I regularly mix into skin tones to create blush and lip colors. Would not surprise me if later work uh, contradicted earlier work for some of those writers because you can't plan what you're going to write 30 years from now. Or you can, but not very well. Only in general terms, probably.
I'm about to send my book out to another group of agents. Speaking of writing, so that'll be fun. See, uh, see if I get any interesting rejections this time. So there we go. So just bringing in that, you want to keep an eye on where your shadows are. And so we've got a shadow here. I think I'm going to glaze with my Ritterlick over the top of some of these red bits. So I'm going to build a, just grab a brush full of this color and add a lot of water to it. I read, we, I read the first eight books of Wheel of Time while I was working at the game store in Madison because my coworker like was totally obsessed with it and it was the only thing we had to talk about because otherwise we didn't have a lot in common. I stopped. I always told myself I'd go back and at least read the Brandon Sanderson's finish on the series, but there are so many things I have to read that I want to read that I just haven't gotten around to it. I'll get around to it eventually. I like Brandon's work. All right, so I'm gonna actually do a little bit of gentle shading in here. This is very thin. Glazes are really just colored water, so you can see how thin that is. And what they let you do is kind of put in, you can just gently shade things when you want to, just by tinting them a little darker. So it lets, you, lets us uh, create a shadow, a consistent shadow for this whole area. And probably want to get it on the outer edge of these two. There. Now we'll come back in and we'll hit some of these highlights bits wherever there is uh, wherever a fold is sticking out and if I ever like get a little bit uh, out of line like I, I uh, do a blorf then I can just grab my Ritter like blue and correct it it's the easiest way to correct it There we go. And uh, leaving, when you're doing these kind of highlights, even though you are doing them in line with where like folds go in and out, um, if you kind of go back and forth between your orange and your red, it'll give you that kind of sparking and, and moving um, energy feeling. So I'll always be sure to leave a little bit of red in between my areas of orange. In some areas, I might just use a slightly lightened red instead of the orange, depending on what I want to do. But you can be a little random with it since it's magic. And I'm adding a little bit of white to my uh, orange here. Just to make sure that it, it really glows. Um, I don't normally wear glasses at all, Smoth, so these... Like my, my normal vision is 2020, but my close-in vision isn't when I, when my warranty flipped over at 40. <laughs> so, uh, these are, um, three times magnification reading glasses, which is a trick I got from a painter called Marika Reimer, who also has done some work for Reaper, who is pretty famous in painting circles. I used to tease her for wearing reading glasses because she was like in her twenties and she would always have the granny glasses on. The one thing that I don't like to use is optimizers, although I will use them if, like, I really need to get tight, tight on really fine sculpts. Um, I'll grab David's Octavizer, which I think is a five times mag, and I'll just put it over my reading glasses. But normally they're a little bit too far out from my eyes. I don't like the positioning. So I'm glad that for now I can get away with the reading glasses. It's usually enough for me.
So I'm using my Da Vinci today because it is a very narrow, thin brush. So it does this kind of fine detail work very well. Um, as long as your brush has a great tip, it will do this work. But the bigger the brush, the more fluid it's going to carry. And sometimes that means you're going to lose control. So I did switch down to a smaller brush than the Raphael for this because it helps me, uh, makes it a little easier to keep control. Yeah, reading glasses are just a, you know, it's, it's a very easy, if your vision isn't too bad, if you don't have a lot of different stuff going on. And even if you do, you can get prescription reading glasses made. And uh, I have a pair of those too. But usually I don't need them. My eyes are pretty even, all things considered. Let me get that. So we're... And if I go a little pale, you guys see I went a little pale and not quite as intensely orange here. I can always just paint orange right over that because it's a lighter line and it's just, then it's essentially underpainting. Since, uh, since it is a lighter orange, the regular orange will go over the top and make it very intense. <clears throat> yeah, 3X is kind of... I used to use a 2X a long time ago, but I find the 3X is uh, just a good miniatures level. Like I said, if your vision isn't too bad, if you don't need like serious corrections, I would say... Uh, I mean, use the least you can get away with because you, you know... And do remember to focus on things outside of your glasses range. Like, do exercise your eyes still so that, that you don't, like, make them worse. Depending too heavily on magnification can make your eyes very lazy. So it's just like they tell you when you work on a computer all the time. You should always refocus on the far wall or things at different uh, different distances from you to make sure your eyes don't just, like, get really lazy at that range. Yay. So yeah, I hope everybody's looking forward to... Uh to the weekend are you all uh, other than than the ribeye that i heard about which is making me like salivate just thinking about it how is uh anybody else cooking anything fun or grilling anything fun over the weekend it's grilling it's grilling season we're totally um i'm doing uh ribs uh tomorrow night and then we have a fourth of july party on sunday so we're actually going into san francisco What did Michael Proctor do? Hold on, I've got a, you got, y'all are chatty today. Chatty. Oh, took a mini with him and fitted for painting glasses. That's really cool, Twisted Oma. That's smart. See, Michael is smart. <laughs> Nomad Zeke, that sounds pretty much like a perfect fourth to me. I wish I had a hot tub. I mean, we have one here at the complex, but now that reservations are over, it's like trying to get it. You're fighting for it. Yeah, time stitcher. It does help. Oh, yeah. Kiri really didn't like the fourth. Ooh, Tres Leche cake. That sounds totally tasty, War Shadow. I am a, I'm going pretty boring. I'm going very, very uh, true to my, my Midwestern uh, upbringing and uh, doing deviled eggs uh, for the party. It's a potluck, so the host is going to be, like, grilling meat, but then people are bringing stuff. So David's making guacamole, and I'm, uh, I'm doing my deviled eggs because... Midwestern, deviled eggs, it's what you bring. <laughs> A Leo can't type, also can't type, yes. I love deviled eggs too. I love them enough that I only make them for special occasions because otherwise I would eat them. And David makes really, really good guacamole. David makes such good guacamole that I stole his recipe. So that I too could make awesome tasting fresh guacamole. Good 
so this is mostly in shadow, but I still want to pick out some points on this little uh, arrow sigil. See, I had bad luck um, doing the instant pot. What I do is steam them. I steam my eggs. And I actually, the timing is perfect. Like, I have it, like, totally down. I can get perfect um, jammy eggs for ramen eggs and perfect hard-boiled eggs for deviled eggs now. I think it's really just how you learn. Whatever method you learn that lets you really dial it in. And I read a lot of contradictory stuff with the, with the Instant Pot and getting hard-boiled. And I think I just, uh, I went with the wrong, the wrong recipe. So I didn't have luck with it. But, uh... But I've heard that it's very easy. I just couldn't find the... Uh, the recipe I tried was, like, the eggs were not done. It was very disappointing. Oh, deviled egg everything. Yeah. You take your alarm <laughs> over getting dive-bombed by your cat. Yes. Do you use your heart in the pot? See, you guys must just have... I must have just uh, chosen the wrong person, the wrong recipe. Or misread it. I don't know. I just steam them, though, now. It actually doesn't take very long. So, considering the Instant Pot has to come up to pressure and all that, I think my steaming might actually take about as long. Like, not very. You have to boil the water, but there's so little water. But yeah, I always struggled with getting perfect hard-boiled eggs before, but now I'm happy. I do love hard-boiled eggs. Best snack ever. Especially when I was on my um, ketogenic diet. Now that I'm low-carb, they're still a great snack. These days I make them with avocado oil mayonnaise. For more healthy fats. Ah, saute instead of pressure. That makes sense. Yeah, in the pan on the stove. I used to use boiling water, but I found that I got really inconsistent results. So I started steaming them, and now it's like I get the water to boiling, I put the eggs in, I put the timer on, and I get perfect eggs every time. So I'm I'm a fan of steaming your hard-boiled eggs. I definitely, uh, that's what, that's what I've had the most success with. But I used to boil them. Like, that was how my mom did it, and she never had trouble. I think I'm just challenged. I can't make rice either, guys. I have to use the rice cooker. Like, I can't do it. I can cook all these amazing things, and I can nail a steak every time in the cast iron, but dang it, if I can make rice, no, no. Totally a no. Here I am making all these, like, fancy, you know, gourmet, like, you know, recipes, and I still can't boil water, uh, boil rice. <laughs> Mm, yeah. Yeah, I learned a, a, a hack to keep them easy to peel once you have them in the fridge, which is to, when you are soaking, when you put them in the cold water after, um, crack the shells a little bit. Like, put them in, let them cool just a little bit. But then crack the shells, leave them in the water for a little bit. And then when you put them in a container in the fridge, put a, um, a wet paper towel in there with them so it keeps moisture. You can also just put a little water probably in the bottom. And it, honest to gosh, it, it makes such a huge difference. I can peel them so easily now, even days afterwards. <clears throat> hmm, my throat is acting up. I may have to close the window. The, uh, the California um, plants may be trying to kill me today. <laughs> David loves his rice though, Pendrake. I do I do cauliflower rice for me. But he makes regular rice when I make curries and stuff. Or teriyaki salmon. I do love my cauliflower rice. There we go. So now we're getting there. We're getting there quite a lot. And you can see how leaving that edge, like having glazed that edge, makes it stay a little darker. So you can see the shapes still of the folds. Because you can definitely see like this fold coming down here. And you can see there's a shadow under it. So it's working out well. 
Yeah. Oh, well, biscuits are an art form. If like. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, food talk. This is, this is a food talk show for sure, because I cook. <laughs> oh, dear. But yeah, biscuits are an art form. Like, making a great biscuit. Like, all, all hats off, pretty much. Not easy. I'm going to just get this little bit down here. Got to get a few of these upper bits as well because they're up on top of the fold. And then I got to bring up, I got to bring up a lot of little points that are really bright, like with this orange that we did here. This is not a show for fasters and non-foodies. Yes, this is true. This is very true. All right, so how we do this is we're going to put down some pure white, and then we're going to take our really bright orange and go over the top of it. So we're going to kind of figure out some nice little areas that we really want the orange to be bright on. And usually you want those to be either like places like on the top of the fold here where I just made it kind of go down the middle. Um, top of the fold here, you can see where I did it here. Uh, at the points of things, like the points of the horn here. And then always alternate, like I said, with a little bit of red before you pop it up again. Um, but first block it in in white and make sure that you're leaving some space between where you're doing it. And then we'll take some orange and really hit it, pop it up like really bright like we did here. Oh dear. Yeah, well, I mean a lot of a lot of butter and lard, I suppose if you're gonna use butter, lard, and shortening, I bet are the three kinds of fat you would use in a biscuit to make it really good, but it's also just the technique of mixing, right? To get that awesome flakiness. Those in pie crusts, I never got down. And then I, uh, you know, when I went gluten-free, then I pretty much guaranteed I wasn't going to become a pastry expert. Or a... I can bake competently when it comes to cakes and cookies and muffins and all that. The easy stuff, the quick breads. I can make a good banana bread. And I can make gluten-free cookies that taste like... Gluten-free, low-carb cookies that people who are not gluten-free and low-carb enjoy. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's still supply issues, right? Mix biscuit in the pull-out flour bin. Wow. So once again, since this paint is thinned about two to one, it is pretty thin. So using a smaller brush, if you're having problems with control, using a smaller brush can help you. That's why I'm using my, uh, this is actually my medium brush. I'm not using tiny brush on this one. So you can kind of see the nice thing about putting in these little sparks of white is that you can kind of see that you're spacing them out. You can use it as, as an assessment tool to see, oh, okay, this looks, these are spread out nicely. They look pretty good, um, you know, before you put the orange down. Because at this point, if you didn't like where you where your placement was on these, once you finished uh, kind of mapping it out, you could just easily take your fire red and block them out again. Hello, frayed brush. Probably my favorite cookies to eat are chocolate chip with dark chocolate chips, like 70% dark chocolate. But uh, I make a lot of um, Danish butter cookies, except since they're low carb and made with almond flour, they're actually like Danish almond butter cookies because they taste kind of like marzipan. <laughs> they're very tasty. And uh, Ed can vouch for my... Um, my Russian tea cakes, i.e. Uh, Mexican wedding cakes, which he he actually uh, asked me to make twice so he could give them to uh, Dave's wife as a gift for Christmas because they were super tasty.
Wow, Quindy, that's really crazy. Talk about discrimination versus onions and bananas. Like, those are two, like, integral foods. What the heck? All right, so there we go. We'll just kind of outline this. Since this part of this design is in shadow, we're going to pop up the edges where we can to draw the attention to it. <laughs> I, I try not to be in anybody's head. Well, okay, you should all hear my voice. Like, at this point, when you are painting, you should hear my voice admonishing you. Because <laughs> I am told from people at Paint Club that this is a thing where Anne's voice is like, you should really bring that up to white. You should really highlight that a little more. You should really put an additional shadow in there for contrast. <laughs> Yeah, I've been going out. I still will do an online order every once in a while, but David and I uh, trade off. Like, he'll do the kind of the weekend grocery run, and I'll do the... He, he usually does a Friday, and I do a Monday. That way, we, even though, you know, we still left the house during everything, we uh, we split up the risk. I did do a few whole, whole paycheck orders here and there. I still do on occasion if I like need it and I don't have time to run out. All right, then we're gonna put a little highlight here and we're gonna pop all these orange highlights in and we're gonna take a look at it and see if we like it. So this is cool because you can kind of see the shine following, like it's, it kind of makes movement, right? When you look at this, you want to kind of see this move. You can almost like see the sparks traveling across the design. And that's really neat. That's uh, when you can see that, then you're like, yeah, that's neat. That's neat. That's cool. Let's do that. I think I could actually add to it if I put an additional little spark right here. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, good. Let's get some orange on there. I don't think so anymore, Durham, because so many people took up cooking and baking during the pandemic. Like, I would agree with you before that, um, especially like here, it seemed like a lot of people like eat out a lot out here in the Bay Area. Um, but a ton of people started cooking and baking during the pandemic. Like, because they had time, right? And they were home. So I actually think that um, the pandemic helped keep cooking and baking alive. Like, and revived interest in it for a lot of people. You could get a toaster oven, Pendrake, if you wanted to. They, they can be pretty good stand-in for regular ovens these days, if you're just doing small stuff. My hair is, like, totally in my face today. I don't know. I mean, the thing is that you get into a habit, right, Durham? Like, for me, it's definitely going to continue. Like, I, during the pandemic, I was cooking six days a week. Or, you know, toward the end of the pandemic, David also adopted cooking. So then he started, you know, cooking one or two meals a week. And we would, but we, we cook six to seven meals a week. Like, we don't go out um, unless it's a special occasion or it's been a couple few weeks. And then some will think about, like, ordering out. But in general, it's gotten into be such a habit. You know, I take my power nap, I wake up, I check on some stuff, and then I start dinner. Um, and so because I'm in the habit of doing it, and I'm in the habit of kind of planning uh, at the start of the week what I'm going to make during the week or what David is going to make. So um, I it's going to hold. Like, because now it's just what I do. And I love the amount of money I'm saving. Like, I think that because there's a, there's two things, right? There's two positive reinforcements there. Three, if if your family loves your cooking. Like, one, if your family loves your cooking, you're getting positive reinforcement because they love your cooking. Two, cooking is just enjoyable, you know? And then one is that, you know, you've, you've built this, this habit and it's gratifying that you're saving money. Yeah. That's what David's um, mom does, Red Link. She uses just the little toaster oven that they've got more than the regular oven. 
Right, Outer Mama, right. Yeah. Yeah, see, I I want an air fryer. Like, that. that's my next thing to get. Because I like to do um, fish tacos, and doing the fish in that with just, like, fewer calories and less oil waste. Yeah, quick, I do a lot of, like, stews. I do a lot of curry. Um, I learned to cook Indian during the pandemic, and I love curries. So I do a lot of, uh, of fish curries and lamb curries, and uh, we made a beef curry the other night that I really liked, too. So, and I've got a cookbook for Thai and Malaysian food now, so I just need to get uh, a good supply of Thai basil. I'll use regular if I have to. So I'm going to take my straight up orange. This is sunrise orange. So it's, uh, it's got decent coverage, but it's also a nice bright orange. And I'm going to just glaze it. It's a thinned about four to one, but oranges are so translucent that, you know, they're even just thinning it a little is usually enough to get it to really pop when you put it over white. And I'm going to start glazing over these little poppy white highlights. And then if I really want to, Oh yeah, the air fryer. You guys, so you guys really love your air fryers, huh? Ah, Twisted Oma, it's learned. Pick up Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. That book. Because I always thought it was magic too, but now I'm getting to the point where I can just throw things together. Like how I always wanted to, just like you say. But like, that book helped me a lot. Because she breaks down kind of like those are the components of a good meal is a, a salt, salt, fat, acid, and heat interacting. And once you get that, that helps you a lot because you'll be able to like figure out like what your dish is lacking. And you'll know like which acid to use and what level of salt is right and all this kind of thing. Ooh, yummy. Yeah, I've got to slaughter the basil for pesto too, Red Links. I'm with you. Oh, nice. Nice shadow spawn. Yeah. 10 to one, 10 in one toaster oven that does, that also does air fryer. That's nice. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. No, Edzie, totally salt, fat, acid, heat by Samin. I can't remember her last name. But she like really has improved. That book has really improved my cooking. And it's interesting because she also talks about like not just about why fat is important in your cooking, but why, but how different ethnicities use different fats. So when you're trying to do an ethnic dish, like which fat is the most proper fat for it and why it's really cool. So it has some, if you're in, if you're a food, food nerd, it's a good book. It's a good book to just read. Nasrat, thank you. Thank you, Fizz. But yeah, she also, if you want to get inspired and just like have some fun, she also has a four part um, series on, I think it's at Amazon Prime, that's based on some of what she talks about in the book um, with her cooking with various chefs. I stole her ragu recipe off of that, sh off of that show. And it was super tasty and weird. Like it's ragu, the way that, that she and that chef made it, like... That flavor is nothing that I would have thought to be Italian, and yet it is. It's really interesting. So now we got our glaze on over that. Netflix, yeah, thanks. Yeah, Good Eats is fun. Alton Brown is my hero. He's the one who taught me to make good banana bread. Yeah, Shadow Spawn, for sure. Like, I'm definitely getting to the point where I won't go to a steak restaurant because if, unless it's amazing, like, or this, like, they're doing, like, something really interesting with it, I can make better steak at home. So we went to a Japanese taste place for my birthday and uh, it made me really badly want to learn how to cook some of the, we're using some of those techniques. There we go. So yay, look, we've got sparklies, sparklies. I do think I need to put a sparkly down here, even though it's in the shadow. We, we want to, um, 
I need a sparkly there in that part of the design to bring out this detail. So I'm going to just do it and call it magic, even though it's in the shadow. And when your paint doesn't come off your brush like this, it means you need to thin your paint a little bit more. So I'm going to add a little water to it, to my white. It's been around long enough at this point that it it's probably thickening up on me just a little. Right, exactly, Twisted Oma. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, how you grew up too, right? Yeah. Ooh, mozzarella chicken balls. Mmm. Nom, nom, nom. Now I'm getting hungry. Yeah, Good Eats is great. Alton Brown is my hero. All right, now we'll go in and we'll put a little sparkly in here. Now I've got enough paint on my brush. When you're using a thinner brush, you need to use thinner paint if you're going to get this real fine work in. There, and then you can get those tiny little details. Yeah, David says I'm a good cook, which is really gratifying, I have to say. It makes it very rewarding to cook for people who tell you you're a good cook. There we go. So I'm going to use the red first because this is in shadow. Then we'll go over it with some orange. Yeah, I usually switch up to bigger paint puddles if it's really hot in here for that reason. Because if I have, like, right here I've got eh, a fairly small paint puddle. Like, most of my brush will go down the side here before it hits the paint. Um, but the red here is more of a full paint puddle. So when they're full like this, then they actually take a, a fair bit of time to dry. Um, so sometimes I have to add a little bit of extra paint and water during the hot months if my uh, fate's getting warm in here. I generally, uh, I generally don't advise Redarters, but yes, Reaper does have one. I, I tend to recommend making a bigger paint puddle instead. But if you do use a retarder, just be aware, use very little of it. You don't want, you don't need much. Ah, yum. Yeah, yum, 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 yum. You guys. Ha! Shadow Spawn. Yeah, they, they say that so that you have to cook and they don't. Yep. Yeah, there, I'm sure there is a little bit of that, that psychology going on there at times. Though, actually, David is really, like, for a guy who did not cook hardly at all, like, before I moved in, he's really stepped up and helped out. Especially when I'm just having like a day and I'm just too dang tired to cook. They can be poleth, but be aware that they do change your paint's consistency and adhesion. Retarders will affect the way your paint acts. And the biggest thing, the biggest detriment to them is that, especially if you use quite a bit, um, is that it will hurt your paint's adhesion so your paint won't stick to the model as well so just be aware of that if you use it that's why i usually say just you know just use bigger paint puddles <laughs> uh just in case just because i can't be there to tell you how much is too much just be aware and experiment a little bit of the retarder can really help but always try to use, whenever you're adding any additive to your paint, figure out what the minimum is you need and go with that. Yeah, just use very little. Nice shadow spawn. 
Yeah, my parents didn't really, uh, my mom didn't really enjoy cooking very much. And my dad did, but didn't do much of it and wasn't really home to teach me. So I only learned to cook when I got onto, when I started having my issues and and went onto a gluten-free diet. And at that point, it was like cooking with self-defense. I had to figure out. I wanted tasty food. um, And a lot of tasty food that I didn't make was not good for my diet. So I just started learning to cook and it was honestly the best thing that ever happened because I love cooking now and I'm so happy that I can make tasty things I really enjoy it there are times I just want to spend the whole day cooking like in a a really elaborate recipe (laughs) oh nice yeah I think cod is best for fish tacos like unless you're doing shrimp tacos but I think cod makes a fantastic fish taco. That's what we always use. You don't like to cook, you're just cheap. Yeah, well, and that's the that's the other good thing about it, right? I do really like how easy it is for me to save money when I cook more, so. There we go. All right, so now we've got our design And it's very sparkly. Hey, and it's stretch time. Let's get up and stretch. I like cod that's like freshly, really freshly done. Like after that, it gets a little bit too mushy for me. But actually, I tried halibut recently. And that, like it was not cheap because it was wild caught. But that that has a nice balance between, like it's still a flaky fish. And it has a little bit of softness to it. It's not stiff like a mahi. But it's still like, it's, I don't know. It's really, um, it was a really good fish. So, halibut gets a thumbs up from me. Ooh. Guinea Pig Tuesday. Oh, that's funny. That's a great idea, though, Shadow Spawn. That's a great way to, like, um, expand your recipe repertoire. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll have to steal that from you, maybe. All right, if you've been sitting around for an hour, please get up and stretch. Do whatever stretch feels good. Oh boy, my shoulders. See, yeah, swordfish, I think it's the preparation on that one. I have had one with lemon and capers that was really good. Yeah, the auto mod is a little bit weird sometimes. Yeah, don't don't let it bother you. Unless Quindy goes tisk tisk at you. Language. Ha <laughs> ha I'm just so excited that my knoll is painting up so quickly. Like, if I can, like, keep this going where I can get used to this faster painting style, I would be so happy to, like, get some of my projects, like, really, really underway. Except I'm scared that then my, um, my Templar, which I painted in my old method, which is really slow and painstaking, I'm worried that she won't get done. Just because I'll be, like, you know, playing around with all these other models. All right, I'm going to go do my floor stretch, guys. Huh, interesting. Yeah. Let's try new fish things just for the hell of it. <laughs> Pond damage. Yay! Nice! 
Yeah, my goal is to be able to um, to kind of block in a model really fast so that I can get past the boring part and get to the good part. And if I can cut my time by like a significant amount is, is my hope. Um, like Noel is really coming together really fast and that makes me happy. But if I could skip a lot of the painstaking early setup, just do some like kind of paint like like my boyfriend David does, where he just blocks stuff in super fast and then he spends time refining. Hmm. I like lobster in some applications, but it depends. It just depends. I love shrimp, though. Shrimp and crab. I just made crab cakes the other day, actually. They were tasty. All right, let's see. Do I want to pop? I think that's looking good, guys. I don't think I need really anything else. So let's do, um, let's get some fresh white mix up because my white has gotten kind of orangey. Um, and let's do this uh, crystal up here. And I also am going to get my cloudy gray and uh, just start blocking in some silver, I think. Where's my cloudy? That's rainy gray. That's not the right, the right gray. There it is, cloudy gray. Interesting, yeah. Oh, I can't do the cocktail sauce. I do shrimps a different way usually. Like I'll do shrimp scampi. Um, since tomatoes are my trigger, I can't I can't do tomatoes. They'll make me really sick. So, um, so yeah, cocktail sauce is right out, but garlic shrimp is right in. Yep, yep. And Parmesan. And, wi and white wine. Yep. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah, and scallop, scallops. I grew up in a family that really didn't like seafood, so I never got to eat it. So now that I'm, like, you know, grown up, <laughs> I totally eat seafood every chance I get. Like, David and I try to have fish at least two or three times a week. Just to keep us, uh, we've cut back on our red meat a lot. Which for me is happy because I do love fish. I make a coconut lime mahi mahi. That's really good. Oh, let's see here. No, I, I think I like crab a little bit better. It depends on like lobster, lobster mac and cheese. That can be good. Um, I think lobster takes the proper preparation. And it's easy. The problem with lobster is it's easy to overdo it. Like, I think if it goes just a little bit too long, then it's dry and just really uninspiring. All right, let's get this white going on. I think I probably need a two to one with that white, though. You can always thin white more than you think you can because it has such great coverage. Oh, yeah. Cocktail sauce is usually horseradish, um, tomato, I think some lemon. Don't quote me on that. Salt. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the other seasonings in cocktail sauce. <laughs> Muses. <laughs> yeah, like I got a new scallop pan and I really have to, um, just bite the bullet because I, I historically have have struggled with scallops and the only the only thing I can nail them in is if I use my huge huge Le Creuset so I actually ordered a small Le Creuset fry pan to uh to finally once and for all nail scallops oh yeah lobster central yeah the horseradish yep yep yeah that's a key component to cocktail sauce is the horseradish all right, let's get some of this just blocked in so that we can... We're really close to finishing this model, actually. I need to think about her basing if I'm going to do something special. She's got a very minimalistic base, so we probably do want to put her down on a round. Um, at that point, I need to think about what I'm going to do, where she is. 
I kind of feel like she's in a dungeon, though. She's got all her stuff on. She's wearing all her adventuring gear. And I think if she was just hanging out at home baking cookies, she wouldn't be, uh, she wouldn't be wearing all this stuff. So probably I should do a dungeon tile, like, based on her. I don't know. She's a wizard. She looks like she's ready to hurl a bottle of Greek fire at somebody, if so. Or fire potion of fireball. I could think about doing like a mystic rune circle because we've got glowy runes up here so we could do something on the floor. But I don't want to go too overboard on this, guys, because I don't want to... I don't want to spend... I don't like spending a ton of time on bases because I'd rather be starting the next figure. So yeah, so we want to kind of keep an eye on that where I don't want to go too overboard. Let's see here. What did I do on that side? All right, so there's that and that and that. Got it. All right. Yeah, Elixir of Molotov, exactly. Yeah, I think I'm going to do all that silver, so... Gonna just bring this down. Need to get out my um walnut brown or brown liner. So I can block in and uh, edge around some of this stuff. Yeah, just kind of, I think that's the only, well, these little silver, silver divots, but I don't want to do those yet. Although I do need to block in this little um, Ritterlich wrap that's down there. So I'm going to grab, uh, put some white into my blue. Yeah, agreed, Daffod I always like have to concentrate when I'm doing shrimp and scallops to try to nail the doneness. So they don't get overdone because I hate it when they get dry or rubbery. I don't know. I think she's like totally, uh, I think she's totally going to hurl that potion at somebody's head. That's, that's been my, uh, my assumption from the beginning when I started painting her, so. Because the way she's holding it, I think she's going to just twonk. I don't think she's not holding it like she's going to drink it. How about that? Uh, let's see here. Where's my walnut? Walnut. There we are. Heh. You can paint her as anything you want. But I always thought she was about to like hurl that potion at somebody. So now let's actually kind of look at what we did the first. All right. So yeah, I did that and that. Got it. May as well.
block in some uh, potiony goodness on this side. Want to make it an irregular line to suggest liquid sloshing since she's holding it up in the air. And I'll be fading this out a fair bit as well. As it goes down. So just starting out, starting out a little bit. <laughs> That's funny, Pendrake. Or maybe it's a potion of polymorph into frog and she's actually returned home to her orcish camp after, you know, years of uh, careful study as a wizard that all the uh, other orc uh, girls always made fun of her for going to do. And so she's like, all of you orcish sorority types are about to get what you've had coming. She's going to turn them all into frogs. Kind of like Revenge of the Nerds or orc style. There, that'll be a good start. And putting the red with a bit of orange also helps pull the eye around the model here, just like on the front. I'll be glazing over this so it won't stay this um, hefty, but wanted to get that kind of blocked in. Oh, that's right. I wanted to uh, get this kind of outlined as well. Just want to separate out these little bits. There we go. Kind of getting that all blocked out there. Just want to make sure all my details come out and that I've got a good separation between the bone here and the silver. So just put in that little line. Yeah, I've been kind of on a red, yellow, blue kick a little bit. I need to get off of the uh, the red, yellow, blue roller coaster. And if I'm not doing red, yellow, blue, I'm doing red, yellow, green. Or red, uh, blue, green. That's all right. We'll switch it up. Technically, Wyvern is uh, red, orange, purple. So he's analogous. And uh, Lizette is all yellow, green, yellow, indigo. So that's different. So at least we're not totally on a color kick. Yeah, exactly, Durham. No, it's putty. It just, I put her on my big block so that she could be closer to the camera. And so I could kind of just move the big block. So she's, she's stuck onto her block and onto that block, which keeps her safe and lets me work on her back easily. 
So I I utilize lots of blocks in blue tech um, when I'm keeping my models uh, nice. The big block here is technically for monsters, but I don't have any right now that I'm working on that require it. Need to think about my color scheme for Big Wolf Lady from uh, Limbo. Because I haven't really decided on one for her. I want to keep away from my... I don't want to do another red, yellow, blue. Although my Noel is uh, definitely looking like she might be like yellow, red, purple. Which is totally different. She could go all sorts of ways, actually. So she'll be a, a model that's not in my color rut, my current color rut. So walnut is nice as a liner because you can thin it down um, enough to get a very thin line that is still extremely solid. So if you want a more cartoony look or you're working on something with a lot of fiddly detail that you want to bring out, walnut is a good uh, liner. If you're looking for a more natural liner that doesn't look so cartoony, then brown liner is uh, definitely recommended over walnut, I would say. Um, I think Rotten Treats, there, people were talking about that there was a list, but uh, I, am, I am the paint lady, so I don't know. Quindy uh, and others might know. I wouldn't be worried. I think it's too early to be worried, Rotten Treats. Since I'm just the paint lady, I have no idea where the list would be of stuff that uh, that they don't have yet. But Quindy is one of our mods in chat, and she may know the answer to that question, Rotten. So if she is out there, I hope she will. There she is. Ah, uh, it's on the screen during the fulfillment stream, Rotten Treats. Bus, dragon fo folk, rune whites, glow in the dark ship. There's one more thing. Campground set. So there you go, Rotten Treats. So if you ordered any of those things, the bus, the pirate, the glowy pirate ship specifically, dragon folk, the rune whites, and the campground set, then your shipment will probably be delayed until the container shows up, I assume. But if you did not order any of those things, then it's, I wouldn't worry yet. Just double check, make sure your information is correct in the uh, pledge manager, as far as your shipping information goes. I always double check. I'm always really anal about that. Thanks. No problem. We answer all sorts of questions on the stream. Some of them about painting, but, uh, you know, sometimes we can do Kickstarter questions too. <laughs> oh, bummer. Yeah. Then you might have to wait a little bit. I'm hoping that container like comes soon. I know a lot of people are real anxious about it. All right, so let's keep going on the top of that staff, just getting things kind of figured out. But yeah, no problem at all, Rotten Treats. Hey, and thanks for asking, because you know what? If you're asking, there's probably somebody else in chat out here who wanted the answer to that question, but just hadn't asked yet. So that's always what I think is uh, it's never... Never bad to ask the question, because somebody else probably wants the answer, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Luthurian. Um, it's a mold release, typically, is what causes that Luthurian. I usually just wash my guys in hot water and dish soap, and it works. Um, so I don't think it's as bad as it used to be. But, I mean, give it a try. No problem. No problem, Rotten Treats. Happy painting. I hope you get your stuff soon. Alrighty. Then got that outlined. And I want to get this blue, this little blue wrap I keep forgetting. Oh, containers in Cali. Oh, great. Well, that's fantastic. So, yeah, you get your stuff pretty soon then. A hey, Reaper, I... I've helped fulfill the last, all of the last Kickstarters, and once they get trucking on it, it happens fast. Like, Reaper does not mess around. They don't want the warehouse shut down for any longer than they have to. Ah, 
Ah, salad spinner. That's a good idea. I just use a bowl and let it dry overnight. But it, I mean, that's what I do for all my miniatures here on the stream that I use that are bones, is I just use... Use hot water and dish soap and let it dry in a towel overnight. And then, then I start painting it. And uh, we've been pretty... I don't think we've... I think we've hit maybe one hydrophobic spot on one mini in all this time. So usually then the answer is just to switch to thicker paint because usually if I, I'm actually, I kind of push the envelope on that and use thinner paint a lot of my bones. Even when I know it could cause problems. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody at Reaper loves to get fulfillment out. I mean, it, like I said, for the first day or two, it's kind of fun to be um, outside of all the stuff you normally do for work. But after that, you start stressing about all the stuff you should be doing, but you're you're fulfilling Kickstarter instead. Um, so by the time the Kickstarter is, is finished, like everybody wants to get it done with and get you guys your minis. And then we can just sit back and enjoy the paint jobs and the excitement that you guys post about you know as you get your shipments that's the fun part i'm just getting this little blue wrap done here yeah there's there's all sorts of tactics it's great But yeah, it can also matter, like, what consistency of paint you use on your base coat, too, as far as that reaction. Like I said, I tend to push the envelope and use quite thin paint, even though technically with bones I should use thicker paint. So sometimes I do run into trouble, and it's all totally user error on my part. Yeah, I hadn't heard the Windex thing. But hey, if it works, it works. Bottom line is, whatever works for you... Do it. Oh, yeah. I bet. I'm sure the internet is working separate from bones. Because you can't, you can't just shut down. I mean, there were times in the past where we had to pretty much shut down the whole company. But then as time went on and Ed refined the process for fulfillment, it's gotten to the point where we can keep, you know, the internet crew, part of the internet crew working so that we can keep fulfilling. Like last time, they didn't even really need me to come out of the paint department because they'd uh, they'd figured it out. They fine tuned it. At, at, at by the time of your fifth massive Kickstarter, you kind of have it like down. You kind of you better have it down, <laughs> right? So, uh, I mean, like I said, you Quantum, you probably we've got people still working in internet during all this so if you order it that's fine you're not going to take labor away from bones ed is ed, if if internet is working ed has factored the labor in and everything is moving smoothly in all departments like i said we've been the, this being our fifth song and dance um reaper has gotten very very good at allocating labor and figuring out exactly like what's kind of our maximum because there is a sweet spot right you can't just keep throwing people at the kickstarter it's a balance between how many pickers you've got how many boxers you've got how many shippers you've got to keep everything moving at you like your your optimal level so so it's not like reaper can just reaper just could stop and throw infinite people to make the kickstarter fulfill in a day it's like you have to balance everything. So yeah, don't feel bad about placing an order. If there are people in internet, they are supposed to be there. Working as intended. All right. Oh, and I missed that little nubbin right there. Nubbin there. Gotta get the nubbins. Oh, nice. 
Yeah, statue, statue level bronze. I used to use blue liner and, um, oh, what brown did I use? Gosh, I don't remember. Blue liner and a brown for that. Yeah, I'm totally refreshed. I am here. I am here in my, um, my uh, OBS says we're good. All right, so there we go. So we've got that. Let me uh, actually turn her over and lock in her silver on the other side. We've we've actually, we're, we're getting really close, guys. You just get this gray stuff done on this side now. And that should take us to end of stream because I've got about five minutes. And then I'm going to spend all weekend or all uh, afternoon and weekend working on PDFs. I don't know about you guys. I guess I'll take some time off on the weekend. Thanks, Voodoo King. Yeah, she's, uh, we're getting there. We're, uh, her, her back has got her magical cape of protection on it. And we're, uh, I'm just going to block in some of the silver here on her front. Uh, the, what, the stuff that's white is going to be silver. So since I've got my gray together. I just want to put that down. And then when we, uh. Next, resume on this model. I'm, I, she's in a rotation with five others, so it'll be a little more than a week. So she'll be next Friday. Or, no, actually, sorry. She'll be next. She'll be Monday, Monday. Monday after next Monday because she, um, we have 4th of July in there. And the 5th, I will be uh, taking off. So to be with my guy and hang out. So just a little bit of silver gray to so fill in these little uh, white areas interesting so purple then interesting yeah Pretty cool, Valandar. Pretty cool. Well done. Post pictures if you haven't already. Just gonna get a little bit more done on these little guys. I don't know if I'm gonna get all the silver locked in here. I'm trying to be really delicate with it. I'm using my really fine tip brush. Oh, I see. Limited palette. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, limited palette is fun. Uh oh, beepings. It's the UPS truck. FedEx truck, sorry. FedEx is always attacking the stream with beep noises. Almost got that all blocked in. Ah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, metallic colors are still colors, so I agree. That should totally be okay. That's what I would have done. Metallic red is still a red. Get a little bit of this pommel bit, the, or the end of the scabbard there. Block that in. There we go. Nope. Yeah, my mic is pretty good at cutting out background noises um, because I have it on unidirectional, but some really sharp noises just seem to travel. Once we uh, have a new place to live, I won't uh, be here in the apartment anymore. We won't have this issue. But I'm right. Um, our apartment is right next to the office, and so there's a lot there that the uh, package delivery guys pull into. 
All right, that pretty much blocks in the silver, except for up on the staff. We'll get that part real quick. Yeah, bronze is cool because you can do so many things with it. It would be kind of cool if, like, you know, baby copper dragons were, like, new penny copper, and then as they got older, they got verdigreed. And the same with bronze. There we go. And we'll have to, like, bring in some of our uh, lining and details next time on this silver here. So we've got more or less. I need to still line around these areas. Yeah, me too. I like bronze. Pinning it can be very fun. It's a nice change from other NMMs. go. Kind of get that lining down so that we can crisp up everything. Important on these little guys. I lost a little bit of my lining in here. And I dwarfed a little bit there, but I can touch that up. Well, we got a lot done today, guys, other than talking about food. Hopefully those of you who were dismayed and hungry uh, can address <laughs> address our uh, abuse of your um, hunger hormones. All right, so what did we do today? We did a lot of stuff, actually. We locked in our silver here at the end, but we spent a lot of the time finishing up our uh, awesome, uh, fiery, uh, sparkly cloak of protection. Uh, we started blocking in some of our fluid on the back part of this uh, bottle right here. And uh, we did some silver blocking in, a little bit of detailing, a little bit of lining. So that is what we have done today. We have we should finish her proper um, next time. And we'll have to think about basing at that point. So probably maybe at the end of next stream, we'll end up doing a little bit of green work to integrate her to her, her basing. Oh, nice, Muses. Nice. Thank you all very much for tuning in. I hope you had a good time. I hope uh, those of you in the USA who are celebrating the holiday weekend uh, have a great one. We expect to be doing an awful lot of painting in this household and eating. And uh, yeah, I'll be off Monday again. Um, so I will be back on Tuesday. And we on Tuesday, we'll be working on Fungal Queen. So we'll probably do more of her pattern on her mushroom cap. That's what I think I'm going to be in the mood for it. We'll see. We'll see. But I think so. I think so. So I hope you all have a fantastic holiday weekend or a fantastic weekend of any sort. And good luck to those of you waiting for your Reaper shipping notices. I know they're going to be getting them out to you as fast as they possibly can. So have a great one, everybody. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, return you to your regularly scheduled fulfillment channel. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. We'll have a great. Oh, House of X. All right. Great. Okay, guys, have fun. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all on Tuesday. Bye.